Well, the Electrofly Yak 55M sits before us after a good day of flying, uh, yeah. after its maiden flight. Kurt, you did the build and the flying on this, and I think I both did. were enjoyable hey, experience. The fact that I did the build and the flight, and we're sitting here in this in one piece. You know, I never thought of that. That's a testament to the simplicity that's of this like build. That's like an A-plus day, isn't it? <laughs> A-plus for me and A-plus for the kid. Yeah. Man, All right, oh we'll get right into the... Uh, to the, uh, the scoring sheet here, build as advertised, you've got four out of five. Four to five. Um, it, it, we joke around, I've built a lot of ARFs, and ARFs are right up my alley. So um, you, you just pretty much go over the kit and you look for things that may have been skipped at the factory. Um, and then at that point, you go on with the assembly. This is a, an Electrofly kit. It's from a family of companies that makes great ARFs. And I'm not just blowing the horn for, for, for their benefit. It's the truth. We build yeah. a lot of ours. Yeah, they do. They make some good They're stuff. They're a builder's company. So it's the kits are tight. They're solid. They're, yep. The lines are clean. And everything's extremely well assembled. So uh, the act was no exception. It went together very well. Um, there were really no major things that we had to change or modify. I had to change and modify to the build. It. Um, I took a couple pictures, and we'll, we'll uh, show you those on the website as well of, of the build process. Um, the one thing that, that I did notice is the balancing once the model was constructed. Um, I would have liked to have seen the battery tray a little more aft or something done. But the challenge you have there is the spar goes right at the back end yeah. of the battery. So there weren't a whole lot of options, but I actually ended up having to add a little bit of weight to the back end. And I just, I just cringe. It's no big deal. Yeah, it's only, know. it's I only know. 28 grams that I put on the back, you know. Yeah, but you hate to weight a model. Now. Oh man, if I'm going to weight it, I'll weight it in battery and shift the battery yeah. back they or forward. They always say if you've got to weight it, make it uh, functional weight. Functional yeah. weight. Well, sometimes you don't have that choice. I actually had to break out the lead on this oh. one. But yeah. hey, so it yeah. wasn't that much. And it, you didn't notice it. it no, I thought amount. it was like an external fuel tank or something. <laughs> yeah, no, not visually, <laughs> I mean feeling. But yeah, oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, no, it's a feature. It's in the X that was a Anyway, let's move yeah. on to the next. Uh, Finish, we gave it a 4.5 out of 5. This is a very, very nicely done plane. plane. Gets a lot of compliments. We've had it out in the public yeah. a few times, and everybody loves it. Everybody, yeah, they're just drawn to it. Yeah. And, in fact, we before we even flew it, we took it to a couple of... Uh, Couple of club meetings and uh, the the local hobby shop was selling them off of yes. everybody seeing it. So yeah, they were. It's really a plane. If you see it, you fall in love with it. The yeah. lines, the color, everything. And um, uh, I think that the best feature though is is probably the decals. Uh, if I were to really pick one thing out, I put those on. <laughs> I did. Yes. Yeah. Forget the factory applied. <laughs> yeah. Forget the Monica. So you know the beautiful striping. Yeah, a, nah, that's a decal. It's a decal. You know the trick is I use Windex on there. I is that, uh, float it and then wipe it off. Wasn't licking. Case you've never you? done builds before, you, yeah. you might take that into consideration. I keep that in mind. Yeah. Power. Ooh, your favorite. <laughs> Four point five out of five. This says Rimfire thirty five on it, um, and it has plenty of power for what the yeah. plane is designed for. It did not lack for power. We lacked for battery based on what our choice was. Sure. But it did not lack for power. So uh, I'd say it's perfectly sized for the airframe. Yeah, definitely. Ground handling, five out of five. This thing looked like it was on rails, literally. <laughs> and it should. I mean, this plane, these planes track beautifully anyhow. Yeah, they Most do. of your uh, uh, 3D aerobatic planes are going to. That's part of their design. And you, this one didn't disappoint at all. You fall in love with these, the, this style airframe with the symmetrical wing and the mid-wing, um, you know, true aerobat. You fall in love with it the first time you land it. Yeah. Uh, even if, you know, if you enjoy landings or not, you bring it in, it settles right in, settles down so quickly. Oh. It's they slow down beautifully, and everybody says, "Oh, symmetrical wings don't have lift." No, but they have beautiful deflection, and yeah. you can just bring it in right in a nice glide slope, and they get in that nice little pocket of ground effect there, and they just boop, sit yeah. right down the mains. And you can hold the tail up as long as you want to. So you can possible, drive it around. Possible to do one landing on uh, one landing. Yeah, oh yeah, this is yeah. definitely a one landing plane. Not 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 a hopper, not a not bouncer. A hopper. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't three point land it. Uh, yeah. that'd be that'd be kind of interesting with a little stiff tail wheel, but. It's a, it's a great lander, so. Yeah. Um, Durability, we gave it a four out of five. Yeah, it's pretty, it's built up balsa, yeah. and it's a well-built build up balsa. So you're gonna wanna watch, the, the, you're gonna do hangar damage to it carrying it, so it's gonna happen. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's when you, you'll grab the wing and squeeze it, and you'll snap yeah. a rib or something, but. Yeah, uh, you gotta be careful not to uh, put the monster grip on it when you grab yeah. it. And if you do choke up real close to the root of the wing, close to the fuselage, it's a little thicker there, and you've got yeah. sheeting instead of, uh, you know, monocotes uh, bridging gaps of, of spars, so. It's it's tough though. I mean, it's it's a pretty tough little plane. Sure it it's nothing out of the ordinary for a build-up balsa. Yep. Uh, flight is advertised. Four point five out of five. It's a beautiful flyer. I wish we'd had a more calm day to fly because yeah. what you really want to do is bring this style plane down to the ground and and do some hovering and and do some inverts and some you know some rolls and, yeah. and stuff real low. But we had a pretty strong headwind. And let's face it, we fly a plane, we get it out there, and and we have to we have to make it film worthy. Yeah. Um, 
off of our first experience so you guys really know what you're getting your hands on. Yeah. Uh, to go out and take an experienced pilot or a pro pilot and fly a model after multiple practices, that shows the model's capabilities. We always focus on what the modeler's experience yeah. is. Yeah. So let's get it up there and fly it and see what it feels like right away. The more time you spend, your, your opinion starts getting jaded. Sure. And, and we've flown enough planes over a long enough period of time that I can get a plane in my hands and I can tell you what its characteristics are right off the yeah. bat, what its tendencies are. Yep. And uh, the more you fly it, then the more you forget about those tennises. Sure. So it's kind of like watching that dog grow, you know, the puppy grow. You just oh, don't yeah. see it change. No. That's, no, maybe that doesn't translate here, but I thought it would at first. But um, <laughs> it flew great, um, and it, it did absolutely everything I would expect a you plane this size. Just a just second, a second. Here. I'm all right. Everything there. a plane this size to do has the right power plant match with the right airframe. It's a yak. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful representation of a yak. So. With the correct decals on it. If you're looking at the, yes. There's uh, insignia. Well, there's yeah. a professional grade uh, that's, application. That's the key. If you buy the Yak with uh, the intentions of getting a small uh, 3D electric airplane and you have high hopes, you're not going to be disappointed. And I yeah. think that's really the important thing. It's going to fill those expectations very yeah. well. Great flying plane. All right. Flight time, 3.5 out of 5. I'll say this applies to the battery because it's a, it's a pure calculation, man. You've got a motor. You've got a prop. And you've got a, if the prop doesn't, doesn't run the motor past the amperage, well, then it's sized properly, and that's exactly what it didn't do. It was yeah. right on the nose. So there's nothing wrong with the prop and the motor combination. So we just needed more battery. Yeah. We had a 2550 uh, milliamp uh, 4S pack in here, and we needed more. We needed yeah. 35 to 4,000. If you could get a 4,000, now the challenge of the counterweight comes in, the, uh, the tail weight. If you could get a 4,000 mounted in here, and be able to level out that tail or weight, or weight that tail down uh, and get it balanced out again for you. Because if you're flying a style plane, you want CG dead on the money. Oh, yeah. You want to be able to whip that tail up underneath <clears> it and do some hovers and stuff. You don't want to have it real nose heavy to fly like a, you know, like a scale, scale plane or a uh, you know, passenger plane or something. So it was just such a challenge being dead headed up against that spar. I yeah. couldn't scoot that battery back. So now I'm adding dead weight to the plane. And now you're going to start robbing performance off that 35 yeah. motors, which you're going to do at some point. So. Play around with that capacity. If you can get up around 3,500 milliamp, you're going to enjoy the flight times a lot better than we did. Yeah. Field size, uh, field. Yeah, it's a field. Yeah. It's a field you want to take this to the flying field. You're yeah. going to want the room. If you got a 35 size motor, you know, don't be don't be silly about the no. thing. Take it to the flying field. Get get your membership at a club. Get your AMA insurance. Get your 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 Mac insurance if you're up in Canada, and and get out there and, and fly to field. You're going to yeah. benefit with a plane like this, and you're going to be a responsible flyer at that point. Yeah. Portability, 4.5 out of 5. It travels well. It's tough. It's yeah. just a tough, big, kind yeah. of rugged plane. It takes so. some room, but it doesn't hurt it to put it on its nose and lean it off a wingtip. Exactly. Or, yeah, yeah. We, I, I hang it off. I actually have these little, um, these little uh, uh, landing you know, boots. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure what those actually are I called. I think we flew in the that. sun too long today yeah. where our terminology has gone. Um, Fair, they're like a fairing. Yeah, almost. they're like a fairing. Yeah. But there's a specific, a specific term for them. I'm Spads. sure Spads. Spats. Wheel spats. Thank you. Spats. There you the go. wheel spats. I can hang these right off the back of the seat in my uh, in my truck. So it just hangs right on the back of the seat. They're really tough. So it made it a pretty portable, easy plane to move around. And of course, standing up on its nose, it's, it's great to stick yeah. a corner up on its nose. It's plenty tough enough. So. Yeah. Okay. Skill level, intermediate to advanced. Yeah. It's it's a 3D plane. It's uh, yeah. it's it's roll rates insane. It's it's throw rates on all of its control surfaces are just crazy. Um, you know, you can. It just feels like it's hitting almost 90 degrees on that rudder when you really get the thing torqued over. It's not quite that that strong, but uh, it'll move. It'll roll. It'll and it'll do a lot of things really fast on you, especially if you're not used to uh, this style of plane. So you're going to want that intermediate to advanced kind of uh, in between that that uh, that skill level. Yeah. All right. Overall, a fantastic experience, and we really lucked out. We've had a lot of good review planes here lately. Yeah. And the Yak fell right in line. You could tell when you pulled it out of the box what it was going to be like as, yeah. far as, a, as far as the plane goes. The construction is so well thought out, it's so well built, and it's such a proven airframe. Sure. So, uh, it did not disappoint in any way, shape, or form. Nope. I'm Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby. And I'm Rob. Thanks for watching.